One of the questions that I'm very, very frequently asked is how much education is really needed to be good in this area of data science and artificial intelligence? To be really honest, that's not a very simple question to answer. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to offer some perspectives. And the perspectives will have three components in it. One will be knowledge, the second will be build, and the third will be create. Now let's start with the knowledge piece. Now, of course, it is incredibly important to have uh, a good knowledge base of the working principles of data science and artificial intelligence. That can be obtained at an undergraduate level, which will naturally be a little bit more broad-based, uh, or it could be obtained at a postgraduate level through a master's or a PhD, uh, which by definition is more sort of specialized. The second part is build. It's really important from a practical point of view to build out a real working solution. It could be a simple solution, but to actually build it out yourself. The third part is create. And my claim is that to create, it is important and useful to actually have a good research-oriented mindset. So it's a natural question to ask, why is a research-oriented mindset useful and important? Now, the knowledge base of AI is large and is growing in complexity over time. The industry use cases that are coming in these days, i.e. actual practical industrial problems that are coming in, are also becoming very, very sophisticated very quickly. So in order to create value, i.e. be a creator and not just a consumer, and also to remain relevant, it is important to be able to provide a solution or rather continuously provide solutions which are better than the state of the art. In order to do that, it is important to be able to take a step back, abstract the problem out, work on it for about, let's say, 9 to 12 months, and then come back with a solution which is even perhaps slightly better than the state of the art. And if you do this and continuously do this and make a habit of it, then essentially you are constantly creating, you're constantly creating value and hence constantly remaining relevant. What's a nice place to get this sort of research-oriented experience? Uh, if you're working in industry, then it does get a little difficult. It's not impossible, but it does get a little difficult uh, to have the sort of luxury to take 9 to 12 months off and single-mindedly focus uh, in a sort of research-oriented way uh, towards a particular problem where you can enhance the state of the art. It's not impossible, but I'm just saying it gets a little difficult. What's a nice place to actually get this uh, research experience is when you're still associated with academia. And you can do that towards the tail end of your undergraduate degree or perhaps in a master's uh, degree where you do have the uh, you know, requirement to actually have a thesis which can then focus for 9 to 12 months uh, and do a nice research-oriented project and what would be great is if the output of this research-oriented experience actually leads to a conference paper. So essentially, you'll have your first knowledge product. In a digital world, one has to remember that it is extremely easy for people to actually switch from your solution to another solution. So that provides a, you know, a great sort of motivating factor that unless you're on top of the game, unless you're constantly creating, unless you're constantly innovating, providing value and remaining relevant, it could be quite easy for somebody to just simply switch in a digital world from your solution to another solution.